We're going to talk boxing for a few moments now. And uh, joining me in the studio, I'm delighted to say it's Ben Horner, uh, who's making his debut here on BBC Radio Norfolk. Hello, Ben. Hello. Good to see you. Now, I see you've brought your camera as well. You're going to film this. So that's exciting. Um, Norwichboxing.co.uk yeah, he went live today. Oh, he's so. all, you're already getting your plug in. So Norwichboxing.co.uk is your website. At Norwich Boxing is your Twitter account. Now, I've followed you for a while now, and I thought I'd get you on the show because what you're doing is trying to promote local boxing, aren't you? Yeah, I feel Norwich is really underrated. Best trainers in the country, best boxers in the country, but you don't really get to see much of them social media-wise or, or on TV. Mm. So. And you used to box, didn't you, Ben? You, you, you used to train with some of the lads. Yeah. We're going to go through them in a minute and find out what the latest news, but you're a big lad. I can see you, you. So you didn't fancy sort of taking that further? You just used to train? I did. While I was training, I was more than up for sort of getting in, sparring, but I live a little way off from the gym, so until I move back to Norwich and I can get in the gym more often, then maybe that's something that can happen in the future. You've still got time. Right, so one of your good friends is Nathan Dale. Now, we we, t- we spoke about him earlier um, on the air. I was just saying that he's just won the, the World Junior title. Uh, I was there that night at St Andrews Hall. I'm sure you were too. Great night. Spoke to him after. Such a nice lad. But he's had a bit of bad luck with injury just tell us about that the injury happened years ago he's been boxing for years now with broken bones in his hand going over and over letting it rest come back and he thought well enough's enough now he needs to get it sorted he went away see the hand specialist up in manchester he's done the operation 50 odd times and um every time it's been successful so he went up um bone graft and uh, reconstruction on four knuckles for uh, bones in the hand and uh, yeah out till March now but yeah it's not I mean he's only young isn't he that's why he can compete for the world junior title or the world youth title it's a WBC belt as well wasn't it which, IBF belt. it was an IBF belt sorry so, which is again one of the most prestigious yeah. organisations so Nathan's going to be back next March realistically I, I having spoken to Nathan many times myself I think he's targeting the British title that's what his ultimate goal would be I feel the division is packed with talent uh, but Nathan should definitely be in there mixing with them lads he seems to get overlooked quite a bit his name gets mentioned but they go quiet so it's hard to sort of get him out there but continue winning and winning the titles that he has done in the past I'm sure he's it's got to happen and and you, you touched on it earlier, Ben, and I totally agree. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge boxing fan. People know that. I love to cover it here on BBC Radio Norfolk. But some some promoters have always, and they certainly do now, viewed Norwich as a bit of a backwater, don't they? They think, oh, it's just little country boys. You know, they're not. We won't bother with them on our big cards. You know, but but that that's wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Because like you said, it's a real hotbed for boxing. Always has been. Yeah, you look at the talent we have in Norwich, Sam Sexton, Nathan Dow, the Walshers, there's no reason why we, we shouldn't be out there getting the publicity that they need. Graham Everett, one of the best trainers in the country, once again, very much overlooked. But with his guidance, John Thaxton, again, European champion. You can't get talent like that in gyms around the country, so it's there, it's ready to explode, it's just getting that break. Yeah, OK, now let's mention Liam Walsh because he's the one that really, well, for me, one of the best fighters in England, pound for pound, in, in, in Great Britain, if not Europe. And mm-hmm. Liam has been overlooked, hasn't he? Because he's with Frank Warren yep. and, and Liam won't pull any punches, if you forgive the pun, and he will say that Frank Warren hasn't always given him the fights he thinks he deserves. Just tell us the current situation because he had a had a, an intercontinental title mm-hmm. fight that he won the other day, um, but that was due to be a British title fight. But Graham Everett has told us and, and said it on this radio station that he hopes a world title shot might come by the end of the year. Yeah, the world title shot is there at lightweight or super featherweight. Liam's lucky that he doesn't have to box at one or the other. He can box in either, and he's quite happy to drop or gain the weight. At lightweight, you see in his last fight, he stopped the lad with a body shot, a very good shot. And at super feather, he does the same. So, yeah, the world title shot is there. It's just whether Frank Warren makes it. Well, Liam's saying, I mean, this, this is right up your street at Norwich Boxing because Liam says he wants that, if he, in his wildest dreams, wants that fight in Norwich. I mean, let's talk about it. Liam Walsh, Ryan Walsh, we'll talk about him in a minute, Michael Walsh, Anthony Agogo, Sam Sex and Nathan Dale, all these great local boxers put that on at Carrow Road in, I don't know, the end of September, bit of tarpaulin, nice warm weather. But it would sell, wouldn't it? You'd get 10,000 there, surely. September would be too soon. We'll be looking August next year, in my opinion. Ryan Walsh is fight. Well, we'll hopefully we'll go out and win the British title in September. So you've got the world title with Liam, British title with Ryan, Sam Sexton, and you go go like you said. All the lads are there. Warren could bring a few of his in. So yeah, like you said, there's no reason why we won't be able to at least fill Carroll Road. 
In the studio with me at the minute is Ben Horner. Uh, we've been talking boxing. He's uh, the purveyor of at Norwich Boxing, which is a, 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 a well fairly new Twitter uh, handle that he's using to give you all the news on local Norwich boxers. He's uh, very friendly with a lot of those local boxers, spends some time at the Kickstop Gym with Graham Everett and the boys, so a little bit of an inside track from him. Uh, we've already talked about Nathan Dale, the uh, young world junior champion who's out injured till next year. Uh, we also touched on Liam Walsh as well, who's arguably... Uh, well, I would say one of Norfolk's greatest ever boxers. I mean, he's based in Cromer. He's born up in uh, Rochdale, but came down to Norwich as a youngster with his brothers. And he really could be, you know, we're talking the realms of Ginger Sad and various other big names that Norwich City, uh, that Norwich have had over the years um, in, in, in the boxing terms. And, you know, Liam's up there with them, isn't yeah. he? He really is going to be a big star. Yeah, you can't, you can't buy talent like what Liam's got. You watch him as... Body shots are unbelievable. He mixes head to body. Just everything, timing, speed, power. You watch him and it's a dream to be anywhere near his ability. So a world title shot has got to come. I think I just said Joe Bugner, didn't I, about Norwich boxers? I meant yeah. Joe Beckett. You know. well. <laughs> I'm getting me, I'm getting me names. Joe Bugner, of course, was the heavyweight. He was sort of British slash Australian. But we're going way too back, far back for you there, me. Ben. You're, yeah. you're just talking about the current. Right, let's talk about Sam Sexton. Now, Sam's a big name. Sam mm -hmm. is a big name in, in, in the region. A well-known heavyweight fighter. He's had some big fights in his time. He's been out quite a while, though, hasn't yes. he? Yes. We haven't really seen Sam for a very long time now. His last fight was against Larry Odubabwek. The War Machine. Yes, yeah, let's machine. call him the war that, machine. Yeah. We'll deal with that. Dealt with him easily. And once Sam's back in the swing of things, uh, the rust is gone. He will be mixing at top level in Britain again. There's no reason why he can't. It's just injuries that is setting back a little. So hopefully they're behind him now and uh, we'll see the best of Sam. And he's back when? Tell us. He's back Friday the 18th in the halls in Norwich. Used to be St Andrew's Hall. All the boxers got their tickets today, so tickets are available. It's going to be one of the biggest boxing events Norwich has held for a long while. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've experienced live fighting there, you know, live fights there where we, where we saw Nathan Dale. You know, it's a brilliant venue. It really is. A br Lots of people have been to St Andrew's Hall, as the halls, as you say, as it's known now. Fantastic venue. They've done everything there, haven't they, over the years? Yeah. But it really works for boxing, doesn't it? It holds the atmosphere. You get the best view. There's brilliant seating there's tiered seating you've got your stand in there's it's just all together a brilliant venue mm. um the best we have in norwich and big sam i'm right in saying he's think he's 28 29 yeah not um, even 30 no, yet or is he 30 could be pushing 30 getting on for 30 yeah. but you know sam that's young isn't yeah, it? it as a heavyweight that is young so all right sam's had bad luck with injuries he's got his other business ventures going on as well but there's every opportunity that sam can get in that mix and you know let, let's 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 you know be a little bit hypothetical here but if tyson fury does the impossible takes mm -hmm. the title of klitschko he's going to want to come back here and defend it by that time sam might have put himself in a a, a ranking position and you never know no, you, and sam could could beat tyson fury he's the sort of person he could beat you never know um the voluntary defenses is something that people like to do when they come back into their own country so why not um sam's been in there with some of the best in britain Commonwealth title holder, uh, fought for a British title, prize fighter winner. So he's been there, done it. So yeah, the, the opportunity could arise. So hopefully for Sam, it'll, it'll be a massive event for him. Yeah, we'd love that, wouldn't we? Because he's a great guy, Sam. And of course, he's got a, a cafe as well, KO Diner as well, hasn't he? Which uh, I love that. I mean, we've done it here on BBC Radio North. He's got a, you know, a, a, well, I wouldn't call it a greasy spoon. That's no. selling it down. But it certainly does do good breakfast. I can, I can vouch for that. Anthony Agogo, let's talk about him now. I love Anthony. He's a great guy to talk to. He's so friendly and he'll, he'll give you the, the best interviews you've ever had. And, and he is he's such a good fighter as well. He won that bronze medal at, at London 2012. But talk about bad luck with injury. He's had it, hasn't he? Yeah, um, I got to meet Sam for the first time a few weeks ago. Anthony, Anthony I know you Anthony. Mean, yeah. yeah, brilliant lad. Injuries aside, once again, bags of talent. The Achilles have been sorted now. And unfortunately, going over to Germany, come back fight, shaking off the ring rust, dislocated his shoulder. But them aside, like once again, he could go all the way. He really could. And, and the thing with Anthony Gogo is he signed with Golden Boy Promotions. For people who don't know, uh, that that's it's arguably the most prestigious promotion in the world Oscar De La Hoya the, the legendary fighter who, who runs it um, it's a big name promotion that took him part of that was because 
he is marketable he's he's a good looking lad you know he's he's great to great talker but the main reason was he was a really exciting fighter and they 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 have exciting fighters on their books do you think that put too much pressure on him no he seems to be able to control it really well lucky for him oscar de la hoya picked him personally it was he really enjoyed his style so that little bit of pressure's gone and he can just go out there and do what he has to do and know that his promotional team's going to be happy obviously he's now co-signed with the Sauland brothers in germany they work alongside eddie hearn so all round anthony's got it going for him he'll be able to pick up fights all over the world yeah i agree and, and as you say he was with Sauland now and he fought in germany recently but as, as we mentioned ben dislocated his shoulder twice i think actually in that fight fought with one hand one arm at the end of it still won yeah. uh, which was his toughest fight so that's a positive but i guess it's going to be next year till we see him again it depends some boxes come back sort of three months after dislocation but it, it depends how bad it was but hopefully we'll get him back in the ring as soon as possible and then see him fighting the, the top in the division i'm sure he'll go on to win british and then world level is is always dean horn is with us otherwise known as at norwich boxing on twitter he's launched a website as well today uh, all the norwich boxing news as well trying to big up norwich boxing that's what we like to hear ben now then let's talk about ryan walsh because we, we spoke about liam he's the I guess the more famous of the brothers because he's a British title holder but Ryan Walsh a brilliant fighter himself a little bit different to Liam even though they are twins uh, and he's hopefully going to have a British title shot very soon the date is set September the 5th um, whether that whether that happens or not I don't know Warren's sort of arranging a load of shows around that time so with Warren win, winning the purse bid he'll be promoting the fight he's been very unlucky with his career he's he went in with Lee Selby who's now gone on to win a world title unfortunately lost the fight but it's put a stumbling block in front of him um no one wants to fight him now no one wants well to he's dangerous isn't he yeah. that's, the, that's the thing yeah he is that he's took the fight because he believed he could win it and obviously come short on the night but everyone else see how promising he looked in the ring against Selby. So no I saw that him. fight, and I, I said to Graham Everett afterwards when I spoke to him, I said, "Look, I I didn't I don't really rate Lee Selby, and I I I, I feel bad now because since I've watched him, what a fighter! That's yeah. the first time I'd actually seen him live, and I think Ryan Walsh made him look ordinary. Yeah. And Lee Selby is one of the best fighters in the world, pound for pound. He, he's he goes over trains in America at the Mayweather Gym." So, yeah, for Ryan pushed him, pushed him as far as he could, and hopefully one day the fight can happen again and there'll be a different result. I think I think there's every chance. I know we're biased towards Ryan because he's our mate and, and he's he's a local boy, but I think that's a definitely a good shout. Now, let's just mention Michael as well. Michael's the third brother. Uh, he's not one of the twins. He's, a, he's, no. a, he's slightly older, isn't he? Uh, he's a, a big puncher, isn't he? Yes. And, and he's come back out of retirement. Um, I went down to walk York Hall on the night of his return fight, and once again excitement from the first bell it looked as if he was had set, steadied himself and was working his shots but then the old michael walsh come back and finished it in style very quickly <laughs> and what's what's the plan with michael i mean he, he 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 he's a cheerleader really for for the twins isn't he but he's also in his own right a good fighter i mean again he, he'd be trying to get in that british title mix wouldn't he from what i've heard um he wants the fights he wants to be in there fighting for the british title it, for all three brothers to hold the British title would be absolutely amazing. So, yeah, hopefully the fights can come along for him. But once again, who who wants to get in there with someone who's got yeah. a record of 11 wins, 11 knockouts? That's right. He's he's a, he's a dangerous fighter, isn't he? Um, we will mention Be Billy Bird as well. Uh, Billy Bird's a, a young man. He's from Sudbury. Uh, he He's actually... This is why it's funny. You go down to the kickstop gym, don't you? And, and yeah. Graham Everett's a huge Norwich City fan. And, and uh, Billy Bird's an Ipswich fan. <laughs> so they, they constantly are bickering each other. But he's a great lad, Billy. Um, a bit unfortunate. Had a defeat... In at the York Hall, didn't he? Yeah. But he, he's a he's an up and coming youngster who's still got time to repair that record. Yeah, he's had ten wins now under his belt. Uh, won the British Masters. Uh, went away to York Hall. Nutrition problems. Unfortunately, come away with a loss. But so, just explain to people what you mean by nutrition problems. Um, so it went into the fight with more weight carrying on, coming up to weighing. So it's just sort of managing your food, managing your diet, and uh, unfortunately, come in with the wrong plan set. But he's learnt from the mistakes and uh, he says that he's coming back with a bang and he's going to make a statement on the scene. So once again, he's another one who can go on British level, if not further. OK, brilliant stuff. That's the voice of Ben Horner. Uh, we're going to break for some music in just a moment. When we come back, we're going to discuss 
general boxing and uh, what's going on in the world of boxing. You know, we all we all heard about Mayweather Pacquiao. We all probably saw it. Perhaps a little bit of a disappointment in the end, but the hype was certainly there. And we'll talk about any possible possible shots that perhaps Amir Khan may have at Mayweather. You never know. Ben Horner with us in the studio, a, a Norwich boxing man, uh, covers uh, as many Norwich boxers as he can. Also goes a little bit further afield as well. And uh, we wanted to talk about Craig Poxton, a, a lad from Lowestoft. Really good uh, fighter, up and coming, and he's just come back after a little layoff, hasn't he? Yeah, uh, he's once again another one who's been carrying an injury, uh, but fighting through it. And again, for it's time now to get that sorted. So cartilage damage to the knuckle, but that's behind him now. He's back in the gym punching again. So uh, hopefully we'll see the best of him. Um, his last fight was an area title fight. Many thought he won it, but it didn't go his way on the night. But it's never impossible for him to come back and go again. Um, I believe he should be mixing at title level. Area maybe English, so mm. it's up to him now to put the work in in the gym and show everyone what he can do. And Ben, what what's important in this game? I mean, my granddad was a promoter in in the local area, East Anglia, stretched down to London a little bit as well. And what's important, and what what I think Graham and and, and Mervyn Turner do well, and you'll you'll understand this is the matchmaking. When people want to go and watch a boxing match. The, the, the boxing fans that are purists, they don't want to see knockouts. They don't want to see, you know, anything brutal. They just want to see good, even fights that go the, the distance, a good point scoring fight, scoring punches, clean, good fighting. And I think Mervyn and Graham put on good shows. I guess you'd agree. I, I said it about the last show at Mercy. Uh, there was four fights on the card, which many would have seen that as a disappointment, but it wasn't. Every single fight was matched to perfection, and every fight was just unbelievable from start to finish they went in there to fight they went in there to show what boxing is all about so yeah unbelievable both of them do such a good job shamrock promotions without them we wouldn't be where we are with the boxing scene in norwich and obviously graham alongside mervyn is just brilliant set up and they, they're getting the fights that the lads need yeah graham graham ever really a great guy if you ever get a chance to speak to him if you're at one of the shows you, you'll love graham he's a great guy he's a huge norwich fan and also he's he's a guy that that is so passionate isn't he yeah ben about his sport and he'll talk to anyone about it as well won't he you stop him and want to have a chat he'll talk to you he's such a great guy yeah brilliant um he welcomed me in uh he was the reason i was sort of i've got to where i have with doing this norwich boxing um i started off just as a bit of fun he said come down and get some footage of the lads and then mervyn got on board and it's sort of spiralled from there, and I can't thank both of them enough. Yeah, so if, you, if you're interested, uh, the website is norwichboxing.co.uk. Yep. All your news on Norwich Boxing, great stuff. I certainly will be adding to that, that to my favourites to keep in touch with what Ben's talking about with all those local fighters. Ben Horner's with me. He's a, a boxing man, a, a, a reporter and a, a, a journalist who's been talking about boxing, and he has set up, set up a website and also a Twitter handle, which is at Norwich Boxing, and he's going to, throughout the uh, years, promote Norwich fighters. I noticed on your Twitter, um, Ben, you've got two little green and yellow gloves. I yes. like that. Did you design that? or? Yeah, um, um, so the, web was, the website was designed by a friend of mine, and he sort of designed the logo. Um, we both said that Norwich is yellow and green. Uh, we're both Norwich fans, so why not stick with the yellow and green? <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. Right, let's just head over back to Nick Bowler. He, he's uh, just confirmed that it's half time, and uh, just let us know that it, it, how it finished at half time. There, Nick. No, we've we've lost Nick. Uh, just just the, in my ear, was told that it was half time, so I guess no more goals went in. So we'll be back with Nick uh, about four o'clock. Yeah. So the green and yellow gloves we love, and uh, just a few moments spent to, to go before we get on to our next thing, and we let you carry on. But um, just just tell us a little bit about where you hope to go with the website because. There's, there's a gentleman by the name of Kurgan, I think it's Coogan or Kurt, yeah, Coogan, Coogan, Cassius. Coogan Cassius. Now, I've seen him at many boxing shows that I've been to. He's well in with Eddie Hearn, the, the most well-known promoter in Britain, also with Frank Warren as well. He films fighters, he gets exclusive interviews, and it's just, he seems to be, just be a fan that's that's gone gone a long way, and I, I guess you could be the same. Yeah, the way I see it, I'm, I'm looking from a different perspective to them. Um, I want to be following the lads from Norwich. I believe we need the attention, and it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing it's all about what our gym's doing and what our lads are doing so the more attention that our, our lads can get the better so he can go off and travel the world but i'll always stick by the lads in norwich uh just coming to the final few moments of our guest ben horner uh he's uh the man who has set up social media trying to capture the imagination of the local boxing fans sticking up for the norwich boxers and uh we've we've, we've covered all our local fighters but let's just talk about the 
international scene and what's going on. We hope that always to see those British fighters with the world title. Carl Froch, of course, has retired. Perhaps not, uh, perhaps uh, the UK's biggest star. Uh, but Amir Khan, you know, is that fight going to happen, do you think? More Mayweather Khan? I mean, I'd love to see it. I've travelled to Vegas to see Amir Khan. I'm a big fan. I really rate him. We, of course, saw him fight against Jackson Williams early in yeah. his career. I was there for that one, that Norwich boy, Jackson, who, uh, well, he got as far as the second round before yeah. getting in trouble. But what do you think then? Khan Mayweather, can it happen? No, um, Mayweather doesn't want it. I feel Khan's speed will be too much for Mayweather. But if it does ever happen, Mayweather's got one more fight at the MGM Grand September. Maybe looking next year over in England, Wembley. It could happen then, but still, I just can't I can't see it happening. So Mayweather has, I think he's got the 49 wins, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. And 50 is the record. Yeah. Is 49 the record, or has he already equaled the record? Or is Because Rocky Marciano, I think, was 50, 50 unbeaten. Yeah, 50. So 50, he needs 50, to go yeah. above that. And look, you know, Floyd Mayweather keeps teasing that he's going to retire, but that man has got an ego the size of, well, this forum. Yeah. So the bottom line is he will want to get that record, won't yeah, he? Yeah, he's going to go for the record. Um, the, the next opponent, a lot of people are seeing it as an easy pick. So it opens up the door then for that record to be broken. And we touched on Tyson Fury against Klitschko. Now, for me, Tyson Fury hasn't got a hope. You know, Klitschko's 40 now, and uh, it's, it's Vitaly, isn't it, Clark, Klitschko? It's, no, it's Vlad, sorry. It's Vladimir, Vladimir sorry. Vladimir. So model up. Vladimir is, is the man with the belts. He's 40 years old. You know, I can't believe that Tyson Fury's only 28. Is he 28? 26. I think, 26. I mean, God, I don't know where they've got that from because the guy <laughs> looks about 40 himself. He said, Tyson Fury, and I quote, that there will never be a fighter like him in another thousand years. That's exactly what he said because he played the clip the other day. I mean, he hasn't got a chance, has he, against Klitschko? He's just too good for him. Um team fury on this one go on I, tell I us can, why i think it'll stop him everyone has to come to the end of their career at some point so 40 years old is quite old for a boxer uh, that you always get that the younger generation come through win against the older generation it stop puts a stop to that so i uh, i'm fury all the way oh putting your neck on the block there well Mervyn Turner's involved with with Team Fury yeah, isn't he, he and we is. often see him in his corner I think he's in his corner every fight so I guess there is a little bit of a local interest because I know Mervyn's based in Luton I think but he's always in Norwich he puts on shows in Norwich so a little bit of a link there and we saw Young Fury didn't we I don't know if you were there that night and Huey, and Huey Fury as well we saw Young Fury make his debut in Norwich I was there that night and he's another prospect isn't he yeah um, Tyson was there that night as well he's just massive absolutely huge uh, but yeah Young Fury looked good but not the same level as Tyson. Huey Fury, once again, on TV, he looks fast, powerful, in person. He didn't look as great, but then since then he's gone on and he's beaten people that others have struggled against. Well, you heard it here first. Ben Horner, not at Norwich Boxing, says that Tyson Fury can stop Klitschko to win the belts yep. and be one of the uh, you know the most prestigious British heavyweight champions of all time. He'd be, he'd be up there with Lennox Lewis then because Lewis held those belts as well, of course. Yeah, I, I, I can't see it going any other way. Fury will have too much power with with the whole punch and clinch, uh, the jab and clinch that uh, Klitschko has got. Fury will just catch him with an uppercut as he comes in, and I just can't see it happen, going any other way. Well, Ben, it's been great to talk to you. Just tell us again about that that next big fight night in Norwich before we let you go. September, Friday the 18th at the Halls. You've got many boxers. Sam Sexton's back, Craig Poxton. Zafer Morris is on the card, always... We didn't well, mention Zafin, by the way, did we? He's, he's, this will be his fourth fight. Fourth fight. Former former white collar boxer yeah. that's turned pro. Thirty years old. Never. F- but it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be that he turned professional. But it just goes to show, if you've got a dream, never give up on it. His motto is, he's living the dream. He really is living the dream and living the life. So, he's one to watch out for. As is Billy Boy Bird. All the lads on the show. It's going to be a massive night of boxing. Okay, there you go. That's the voice of Ben Horner. He's been with us for the last hour or so. Great to hear from him. We'll be hearing a lot more from him. Uh, He's the man who's promoting Norwich Boxing, and that suits us well because we always love to promote Norfolk Boxing here on BBC Radio Norfolk as well.